Welcome everybody to the next game in the series of playoffs f following NAU. Today we are going to be up against... Um, <laughs> excuse the background noise. Uh, NAU today will be up against CSU Sacramento. Uh, my name is Ian Cyrus Pep Sloan, and today I'm joined by Ramsey Ramzilla. Hi. Uh, so we're here for uh, NAU versus Sacramento, and uh, my part in the background, but there might be some uh, past... Uh, Bad experiences with uh, Rathbone's uh, Kane against uh, Sacramento. It was not a good game for them, so they immediately banned out and uh, also banned out Tristana, who is really solid this season. Uh, I believe they also banned out Evelyn, who is a uh, go-to pick of Rathbone's too. So uh, the two juggled bands and they're two pretty strong junglers that uh, Rathbone's pretty good at uh, banning out Fizz too. Uh, Fizz. Uh, I'm not sure if he's strong this season. I think he's probably just a uh, pick that uh, Sacramento liked. Uh, their mid probably likes. Yeah, I mean, we saw, we've saw we seen some performances on Fizz from Tianchi before, so it's definitely a nice pick to have out of the way. And his final ban for round one of bans is going to be Seraphine. Pretty standard along the lines of things that are super high priority and are pick ban at the moment. First pick is going to be Hecarim for the side of CSU Sacramento, though, on the Hecarim. Um, super strong jungler right now, even after the nerfs. Uh, his clear speed was taken out a little bit. And the counter here from NAU is going to be Karthus. So Karthus will most likely be played in the jungle as he doesn't see a whole lot of solo lane presence for the time being. Uh, Rathbone is also pretty proficient on the Karthus. And it did see some pretty effective play in last week's series. Uh, second pick was Karma. Most likely going to be down in the bottom lane as a support could also be flexed in the top lane. However, either way, we're going to be seeing more uh, what I imagine is going to be some Moonstone abuse. So it's going to be no surprise there. Uh, still a pretty effective strategy, all things considered. One thing I really like to see here, though, is the Rel lock-in coming in from Sacramento. Rel is basically the strongest support in the game right now, as far as I've seen. She has tons of heavy crowd control and is just a really versatile pick overall. Able to get really strong engages too. She's going to be on the. Not only is she great at you know engaging, but she's also the front liner too. She's able to soak up a good amount of damage. Uh, honestly, in the bot lane, we can probably see her try and get that mid bush control so that she could probably get that flip over. And we also see Kaisa getting locked in too. Kaisa being very strong this season. Uh, well, still pretty strong. No, but we don't think we don't. We don't. We don't. Uh, we'll see what uh see if we going to get an uh, ADC pick 2 from NBR. We're going to see Jinx coming out from NAU side uh, buff this season and she's also just pretty strong right now. She uh, is going to have a lot of uh, good uh, range uh, basically differential uh, with the Rockets uh, being able to probably poke out Kaisa and Rel but Rel is going to be really tanky so it's going to be hard to pick through all of that. So we'll see what uh, any is going to start with the second round of bands. It's going to be Darius. Um, Darius is pretty, uh, pretty strong right now, too. So uh, no surprise there. Uh, making sure that we don't have that true damage that Darius uh, can always dish out. And it's very scary if he starts get, getting the ball rolling and the Fiora band, too. Speaking of bad past experiences, Fiora being a really strong uh, top laner. Or call him a bird. So, uh, so getting uh, Fiora out of the way is uh, going to really help out uh, Sacramento here. Yeah, Sacramento is into their last uh, ban here, and it is going to wind up being the Echo. Pretty sensible ban, all things considered. Tianchi does like to play the Echo from time to time. And frankly, at this point, all I've seen from bans in the round two is just comfort picks for roles that haven't been been picked up yet. Um, outside of this, I'd really want to talk about the bot lane matchup here. Um, we could, of course, get an, a just as interesting matchup topside or even in the mid lane. Although, as we see the Janna hover, I suspect we're actually going to be seeing the Karma top like I had earlier suspected. Um, it makes it a little interesting to see what uh, Sac State, or not Sac State, uh, CSU Sacramento is going to pick up here. Especially now that they are aware that the Karma is going to be in a solo lane. Outside of this, I really see NAU kind of forming a, not a funnel, but a, just a very heavy kind of uh, Jinx focused comp. Um, one thing I really think they should be doing here is picking frontline as their last pick, probably something like the Galio, if they can help it since mid lane is still open. 
Yeah, if they go, it would be really helpful, and they're probably going to go with the standard, probably, uh, you know, mage pick. I'm going to assume for Sacramento side. So uh, having Galio will be important for that too. Oh, Corpy. All right. But yeah, uh, I've never seen uh, Colin Bird's uh, Karma, so I hope it's uh, you know up to par like the rest of his uh, top laners. I'm going to assume so though because uh, Colin Bird really good uh, at the solo lane. So we'll see. Oh, Yone. Hmm. Not quite In much of a front laner, but he's going to be able to dish out damage. So. I'm not sure. Mm, I, I still would have rather prefer to see Galio, but we'll see if the Yone pick actually works out for uh, NEU here. Yeah, ultimately, I think NEU has drafted a very interesting comp. Um, if they manage to start snowballing with picks like the Yone and the Karthus, um, they can definitely take the game into their own hands and play at their own pace. The major concern I have is the fact that, honestly, with the Rel pick, the comp of Sacramento is just pretty nuts. Um, you already have a lot of not quite super synergy, but just really good synergy with the Kaisa pick because Kaisa can kill her instinct into the back line and get a huge rel stun and then give rel the uh, window to follow up right after. Same thing can kind of go with Corky and Hecarim. Uh, Corky can use packages and Hecarim can use Onslaught of Shadows, his ultimate to dive back lines and just get great setup going. We are going to be in a three minute spectator delay as summoners are already in game. And we'll just kind of take this time to talk more about comps and maybe some specific matchups. Um, going into it, I guess, are there any matchups that stand out to you so far, Ramsey? Well, actually, uh, I know uh, the last game of last week, we also had a uh, Karthus versus Hecarim. And while Wrath did uh, struggle a bit in the beginning, we saw that uh, he started playing with his team more and being where he actually needs to be, having pretty uh, excellent positioning and started to uh, completely wipe off the uh, enemy team of, I believe it was Portland last week. Uh, so it, it, the Hecarim was almost always locked down, but as we can see here, Karma does have CC, but it's not consistent. Janna does have CC, but it's a... Uh, skill shot so it's not quite as easy to land but that tornado can be surprisingly effective i would say uh so we'll see how easy it is to pit down the hecarim but if he's allowed to if he's allowed to basically play the hecarim game of i get to go behind you and you can't really do anything about it and i'm just going to nuke you and he's going to have a really tough time with this yeah, I have to agree here. Um, I'm really concerned about the Janna pick. Um, you know, Rel was left up, and I think there was kind of the option for any of you to pick it, given that they had probably the had the idea of Karma Top in mind already before locking in um, anything in, anything else in the bottom lane, really. Of course, Karma could have had her place in the bottom lane, but I honestly don't think she has too much of a spot right there outside of that i honestly think i would have rather seen lulu come out from nau here um it did get through picks and bands uh pretty much unscathed since it wasn't taken away by either side and i think polymorph is just as valuable tool when it comes to peeling a rel off of ear carry um it's no alistair headbutt or a very well-timed Jan or janna tornado to be fair but lulu is also very point and click and is an extreme enabler when it comes to your carries um, has great synergy with Jinx in this situation here. And honestly, even though Yone isn't the best target for some of that stuff, the speeds, the speed up and I believe attack speed coming from Lulu is definitely a big help in that regard as well. Um, but really, I think the game, at least game one here, uh, rests entirely in the early game. And depending on whether or not uh, any of you can at least go even, if not secure a lead, um, if they fall behind, I really don't see them having too good of a time this game, especially since they do have a hyper carry in the bottom lane like Jinx and just something for the overall damage like Karthus. I mean, ultimately, if Hecarim and Rel are too tanky to deal with, then the back line of Sacramento is just going to have all the time they need to get the setup done or get the execution out and just absolutely wreck face. We are getting into the loading screen here as the three-minute spectator delay is up. So far, oh, there we go, finally captures. So far, nothing stands out too much in terms of keystones and summoner spells. 
I do like that Hecarim has g both Ghost and Phase Rush here. Oh, and we have a pause as I believe NAU's mid laner is in the bathroom. So either way, we do have a little bit more time here to talk about some of the keystones. Um, not entirely sure how to feel about the area in the top lane for Karma. Um, I'm not all too familiar with the Karma GP matchup, in all fairness, um, despite my love of, of the Pirate Lord himself. Um, I mean, Karma with Aerie, you're looking to do a little bit more harassing because Aerie procs off of your auto attacks, but the same thing can be said if you take Grasp, and Grasp actually gives you a little bit more health and a little bit more damage, at least in terms of poke. I think the Aerie is going probably be more helpful, though, once we start getting into team fights, though, because we'll see the shields coming down, we'll see all that. The Aerie's going to help with both offense and defense which is the nicest part about airy but it's not going to be as useful as any of the other uh runes you would normally see on a top laner in the uh laning phase yeah it's definitely a little out there um I, it's still very standard for karma um for the pick in general <laughs> excuse that i can't wait to see whatever that was <laughs> Evidently some excitement going out in game already. Um, hopefully we catch up onto that uh, sooner rather than later. Um, but outside of that, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely looking to be an interesting game here. Yeah. Um, we are going to get a screen set up so that way some of the audio hopefully gets filtered out. Um, outside of that, I'm looking to see kind of who gets the first gank off here. Karthus, historically speaking, in the jungle has always opted for more of a farm role and then uses his ultimate uh, Requiem to get the global damage off at six to count as his ganks. And now we have our screen set up, so hopefully some of the audio gets at least a little bit filtered out from the background. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Um, so we are still in pause. Um, I did just kind of go over the hist uh, a little bit of history in Karthus in the jungle and the fact that he likes to do more farming than anything. Um, Hecarim, I think, is definitely going to have more priority in ganks here, especially because he has Ghost, which will allow him to not 100% secure early game, but it will definitely allow him to have a much higher percentage of a success of a successful gank in these early stages especially if uh he's looking to gank from a little bit of a riskier position uh for example maybe from tribush as karma is closer toward her tower in the top lane or honestly even in the bottom lane if uh net and piccolo on the side of NEU are closer toward their tower he can actually still come out of river run right past the two of them and get a knockback into in uh further into the lane yeah and uh as far as the bot lane matchup goes what uh, what any is looking for here is just protecting your jinx. That is your one goal in life. Usually you want to look for engages if you're the support, but jinx is so squishy and she can dish out enough damage that you don't quite need as hard of a gauge that that the Janna can provide. Um, and so it's going to be really important that uh, Piccolo here is able to get those tornadoes, preventing Rel from diving in. Uh, gain those really early, uh, gain those really early picks. Yeah, absolutely. And wh while we have spawns come in, finally as the pause is undone, um, what I'd like to talk about here is the fact that any is looking to do a five-man top possible invade. Um, Architect and Sal on the Hecarim and Gangplank are looking to put some interesting vision in. And Architect is already forced to pop the ghost. No ignite. Ooh, ignite coming down with a flash from Tian Shi, looking to get the knock up on a Sal next. Gangplank is going to get hit by the CC here, and it's going to be a double kill for NAU in the first minute of the game. Yeah, it looks like uh, those two kills went to two characters who are going, who really want it the most, which is Yone and Jinx. Uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, was Karthus, Yona, uh, Yone, and Jinx are probably going to be one of the people who snowball the heaviest, and we're already getting to it. Well, aside from Karthus, but he just needs to hit six, and we're going to see a lot from him. 
But yeah, Yone and Jinx getting those early kills is going to impact a lot of things, especially I believe it was Jinx getting the first blood too. Her snowballing is going to spell disaster for that bottom lane. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, both uh, both members of NAU who got kills here were able to pick up long swords. Um, not the biggest difference in terms of, I guess, the immediate lane. It's going to result in a little bit more poke damage um, and easier CSing, at least in this in this part of the game. Outside of which, though, it is going to mean faster component completion, especially when you're talking about both Yone and Jinx here, who both opt for Noon Quiver uh, items as their mythics. Yeah. So it's definitely going to make a big difference when it comes to getting those first backs in. I fully expect, basically, as soon as we see Net uh, get the first or get get the necessary gold for a Noon Quiver, he's just going to back as soon as he can here and get the uh, the attack speed and the extra AD boost. Yeah, and uh, we can also see both supports here taking uh, Relic Shield. Rel, it's obviously no surprise that uh, she would uh, take that. But uh, for Janna, who and especially Pickle, who I usually see take uh, the, uh, I can't think Spell of it. Spell Thief, thank you. Uh, Spell Thief, uh, which will help with, you know, poking and gain that a bit more damage later on. It's better to see the Relic, uh, the, the relic coming down because you can uh, smite those minions and create a lot of lane pressure on the opposing team. Yeah, I mean, it definitely allows um, NAU's bot lane to have just as much presence, at least um, in terms of the overall lane state, as the uh, combination of Rel and Kaisa here as their lane opponents. Um, Rel is already pretty a pretty heavy uh, pressure in lane, and we do have a little bit of an invade coming out from Architect and Shadowstar. Rathbone being forced off the Krugs here. He's going to get a shield from Karma and be able to do a little bit more here. But I think it's just going to be a loss overall, especially as the damage is actually looking to come through from the Gangplank. A very nice triple barrel. Not sure if it actually found the target, though. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you're going to want to invade Karthus as much as possible because while Karthus is actually going to be able to do some good damage, even early on, he doesn't have a lot of escape potential. And you're once again, Karthus is looking for six. That is when the whole game changes for him. So it, being able to prevent that is one of the top priorities for uh, Sacramento. So that's why you see that early invade from both the uh, mid lane and uh, Hecarim there. Yeah, I think it was really well done play overall. You know, uh, Shadowstar in the mid lane did get priority with the use of Corky Gatling as well as the Q, which I believe is the... It's some sort of bomb. I don't know exactly. It's the Phosphorus bomb. Um but yeah, I mean, it, it, stuff like that really helps him get priority in the lane because he can push the lane in a lot faster than his opponent can. Um, Yone could be able to put up some of the pressure in return, but honestly, I think Corky would have priority there anyway. So it's definitely good getting that priority and getting the invade down and helping to put Karthus behind, especially when he was doing a camp like Krugs, which is worth more gold toward the end rather than uh, toward the beginning like I believe it used to be. Yeah, and uh, we can see right now that uh, as far as uh, gold is concerned, no surprise, NAU has a around a 1k gold lead, and that's because they got those two early, early kills. So that's still obviously uh, really supporting them right now. And as far as the uh, CS goes, uh, Karma actually being able to... Oh, wait, hold Coming on. Coming in from Rel. Rel gets both knockup and a stun. Ignite is ticking on Jinx. However, Piccolo is going to be the one brought very low and forced to flash. Yeah, so you're able, so uh, Sacramento gained the flash out Janna. That's going to help a little, but you honestly want to focus more on that Jinx. I feel like while Janna is an okay pick, you need to bully the Jinx more than anything. So I'm wondering if it was the best to have so much focus on to uh, Janna there. And they even used Ignite on Jinx, I believe, so I'm not sure why they didn't uh, continue to focus on to Jinx. Flash comes in from the rail, getting the stun off. Piccolo is now under duress under tower. Woozy's taking two tower shots, brought very low. Heal goes out, but Ned is going to be able to take the kill credit. Kaisa will be able to pick up a kill on Piccolo here, and Ned's left at about half health as Architect is left at 20% after a gank, I would say, that ends with mixed feelings. And it's a one for one, so it's not the worst thing. But once again, that Jinx still getting now stronger. So, like you said, the snowball, it might happen even more. And uh, I would, if we can see the gold real quick, let's see. They have 1700. They might be able, uh, they're probably going to get that noon quiver soon then. 
At the very least, it is a noon quiver, as I believe the item is priced at roughly 1,600 gold. We're also going to get a very clean triple barrel from the Gangplank, looking to get some damage up into the Karma. He's going to get the Grass proc off with more parlay shots, has the Cannon Barrage available. Cannons go down, and Common Bird is not going to flash here. A very confident play and escape coming out from the top lane. Honestly, that's really good for NAU because that is a global ult, and so anytime you see uh, a low health enemy, kind of like a Karthus, you're going to see Gangplank uh, uh, trying to get that Cannon Barrage onto them so uh really good that uh it's getting uh put out right now and so that NU has a little less pressure uh during this phase yeah i mean it was definitely an interesting play it, it does force that teleport out from comma bird um so now the teleport uh at least status for the moment is evened up as we did see sal burn his i believe after first back i'm going to guess um, so the Gangplank Teleport will be up before Karma's in this situation, although honestly I don't think it'll matter as much, um, because given the, the, na the nature of the lane and the, I believe the matchup, I honestly think that you're just going to be catching waves instead of looking to make those kind of big cross-map TP plays. We did see Net in the bottom lane pick up the uh, Noon Quiver and some boots, so he's actually found himself in a very nice situation despite being in a CS deficit. Combo Bird's actually trading really well also into Sal here in the top lane, getting a nice route into Q combo. Yeah, early in the early game, Karma actually takes a lot of priority in the lane, even against Gangplank, who is pretty good at uh, taking out minions, but it's just hard to deal with Karma in, in these early stages because... She just does surprising damage that you don't expect from uh, a support of all things. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just because she's got the Bandle Glass Mirror at this point. Had, she's had the first back. She's got I, what I'm going to imagine is the Q Max. Um, and once you use the Empowered Q, it definitely adds to the poke damage in pretty hefty amounts. Also, you can see that Gangplate's actually downed by around 20 CS. Karma's really... Uh, making sure that he cannot uh farm safely even with the barrels that are that allows him to farm a bit more safer but karma is just able to continually poke him out and it's never uh he's never able to really farm safely potential dive looking to be set up by any in the top lane wrath poem is sitting in the nearest brush and i believe did reveal although i'm not entirely sure common bird is able to just force a back here and overall, I think it's just a really good early game state for NAU. The first two kills they got are super incredible, but we did see a kill go down in the bottom lane as Hecarim made a visit once again, making it a two for one as the Karthus Requiem comes in and picks up the Rel. A little bit of an unfortunate situation now that the uh, the gold the gold state is actually evened up because of that play. Yeah, it's, it's really unfortunate. And once again, Hecarim doing what Hecarim does, which is dive. You're not, it's really hard to stop him, and uh, I wasn't able to see it, but I'm going to assume uh, Pickle, they're not being able to really stave off uh, the absolute horror that is Hecarim uh, coming towards you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and we also do see the Bomby Cinder picked up by Hecarim here, uh, which means he's probably going to be opting for the Chem Tank. So he's going to have a much tankier build than he would if he were to go something like Divine Sunder or Triforce. I've also got more aggression coming up in the top lane. I'm not surprised by this whatsoever. Common Bird is really taking good, good advantage of the lane state at the moment, as well as the CS lead. Um, NAU really does have to be careful about their bot lane here if they get put, honestly, behind as a result of these trades. However, we do see the package coming in the top lane. Common Bird is going to flash right away, and the cannons are coming down. Shadow Star is going to burn his own flash, and it's going to be the kill going over to Sal. Yeah. Um... While Karma obviously getting those early uh, pokes and really good trades, and you're going to see all that aggression. That aggression is going to come from a, uh, was it, Sal probably asking, hey, can someone get this Karma off of me? Someone please gank for me. And, well, we saw that come through. Rathbone putting a bunch of damage now on the Sal. Chilling Smite was used, and Gangplank Barrels are trying to come out. Flash is going to come out from both the NAU jungler and the Sacramento top laner. And Rathbone's just going to be satisfied with the wave. Yeah, unfortunate that, uh, I mean, you got Anshu the... Anshu next to be caught out here, Fate Sealed, using the Sphere Unleashed, is going to come out. However, it's not going to find anywhere near enough damage as Shadowstar and Architect are going to find themselves another kill. Oh, man, and they might got used on that, too. We're now down a Flash and Ignite from NAU side right now, so these summoners are getting, these summoners are getting lost, and for 
for no return right now, uh, unfortunately. So uh, it's going to make stuff like the uh, uh, Karthus engages and uh, Yone's ability to finish off an opponent uh, not quite as good anymore. Common Bird making a little bit of an overstep, taking some damage here from Akaisa. Second dragon has spawned and it is a mountain dragon. So we're either going to be seeing an infernal or I believe a cloud rift. Um, so far it looks like NEU has priority, although rotate, rotates are coming out from the rest of Sacramento. A very heavy presence up in the top side with a potential sandwich from Rel and Kaisa in the bottom lane. Ghost is popped for the Hecarim as Rel gets a nice four-man magnet storm and a multi-man stun. Onslaught of Shadows diving the NAU backline. Tianxi trying to put out some damage in return. Wrath Poems is stuck in the middle of the pit as Hyden and Mysok goes on a killing spree. GP will be able to pick up the next one as the Karthus R comes down. Looking to find possibly a kill. He only finds one instead of two. Flash coming out from the Kaisa as he's going to be able to get a quadra kill, cleaning up the fight and sec helping secure a dragon for the side of Sacramento. Yeah, unfortunate there. Uh... I'm not sure where it all kind of came down. It was probably uh, the Rowling Gauge getting that four-man Magnet Storm, uh, being able to take multiple uh, multiple of any of you out of the fight for just a bit so they can focus down on characters like Karthus. And while Karthus does have, you know, still some use during death, uh, he was just not in a good position uh, being stuck in the pit like that, so he... Uh, so Rathbone couldn't quite make use of uh, all of his skills uh, being in a position like that. And Kaisa being able to dive over the wall and take off the few little stragglers that uh, any of you had remaining. It's uh, unfortunate with that ace right there. Uh, but it looks like we have Cloud, so that's... <sighs> Jinx is going to really uh, be helped by that if any of you can secure it. But I'm worried about the Hecarim getting it, honestly. I don't... You really don't want Hecarim to be any faster than he currently is, and it looks like it might be the case. Yeah, I mean, if the Cloud Soul um, in the long run goes over to Sac uh, Sacramento here, Hecarim is definitely be one of the biggest beneficiaries of that, as it helps his engage tool, which is one of his engage tools anyway, which is his ultimate. Um, it goes on a shorter cooldown, as well as picking up the flat, I believe, 10% movement speed increase that the Cloud Soul provides. But on the side of NAU, it also holds plenty of value itself. I mean, I think I think both teams really want Soul here. Um, not so much for stuff like the Karma and the Janna, uh, but definitely for Karthus, definitely for Yone, and definitely for Jinx. Um, speaking of Yone, we do have some action going on in the bottom lane. Spirit did get used here from the Yone, and the ultimate was very cleanly dodged by the Kaisa. And we've actually got three-man dive in the top lane now, as multiple ultimates are burned for Karma Bird. Rathbone is here to try and help. However, with Architect taking tower aggro, and now on to Sal. Karthus is going to find a shutdown here. Very well played. Doesn't quite have the ultimate, though, so Hecarim is going to be able to use that Baron Empowered back from taking Rift Herald earlier to get out of the play and make a safe getaway to base. Yeah, uh, that dive... Uh, you know, obviously, Hecarim, like I said, is, his specialty is diving, but Karma is still somewhat tanky in being able to get that shield on her. Uh, Sacramento not quite, be, not quite being able to find the... Uh, the the security of that kill right there and uh rather being able to come through and uh completely wipe out uh gangplank who was taking a, just a bit too many turret shots right there yeah i mean that's what you see uh happen especially when gangplank doesn't have any boots right now he could go for something like the plated steel caps but because i'm sure he also has mr runes um tower tower shots hurt a lot in that situation yeah and it's hard to buy it's, it's hard to say that you should buy armor, especially if you're facing against Karma the entire time, getting poked out all the time. You're probably going to want to get something uh, magic resistance if we're still going to be staying this uh, lane phase. But we can see three, no, four Sacramento members uh, on the top side right now, probably looking for another Karma dive. Yeah, Karma is going to very narrowly dodge the, th the three-barrel combo here from Gangplank. Rathbone is once again present to help provide some reinforcements however we this time around we do have yone rift herald does get dropped for the side of sacramento and shelly's going to get that first charge off maybe looking for a second one after the wave gets pushed in Woozy on the rel is going to take some damage here and will knock up and magnet storm wrath poem very nice maelstrom from the janna however she's going to be brought very low bursted down by the corky here onslaught of shadows is going to dive and separate the entire nau line here comma bird is going to be able to get an assist at least as jinx 
finds a kill with the rocket. It is now net versus the world, trying to find any more damage onto the side of Sacramento. He will be able to use the Gale Force to secure another kill, but at this point, we are seeing Rift Herald charge number two come down and another lost fight for NAU. Uh, we could potentially see Inhibitor turret going down too if we don't have a uh, quick response from NAU, and we just might not. Jelly will get that third charge in, getting a ton of value on the Rift Herald. Um, Jano was able to shield the turret for a little bit here. But with respawn timers coming up, Sacramento really doesn't have the, the window to look for any other um, takes other than just a back here and set up for Dragon number three. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, Karthus, uh, while ulting, was actually caught out by Kaisa there. So that was a really easy kill for uh, for uh, Sacramento there. And uh, losing three turrets like that is going to make it really hard for NAU to recover from, from that. Uh, Common Bird is pretty... Probably not going to have as probably not going to have obviously as much priority in the top lane right now. Might be looking to have more team uh, fights or probably just rush down top lane to try to take out in at least one or two turrets uh, in return. Yeah, at this point, I think NAU is really kind of falling victim to their own comp here. Um, Sacramento is basically at a three almost or at, at a five almost six thousand gold lead. Uh, further extended once this dragon gets picked up. And sure, NAU is going to be able to secure their own blue buff here for the Karthus, but it looks like they're also going to lose a turret down on the bottom lane to Gangplank. Package is coming out from the Corky, and a very nice blast cone coming out from Net. Honestly, a disastrous play, very nearly avoided. And uh, there also goes uh, Cloud Dragon, too. Yeah, the blue buff, you know, it's all obviously nice, but if any of you not being able to contest Dragon at all as they were completely zoned out by uh, all of uh, Sacramento right there. Tier 1 bottom tower is also going to follow Gangplank at this time. He's a little slow since he still hasn't even picked up Tier 1 boots, but honestly with the priority that Sacramento has across the map, I don't think they have to be worried too much about it, uh, especially with the Hecarim Rel combination being so active in the mid lane. Hecarim has plenty of time to rotate down into either side lane if he needs to. Specifically so the bottom lane since it looks like he's at least hovering a little closer toward that side of the map Yeah, also I'd like to mention that Raph does have dark seal, but Honestly Raph's Karthus is almost always just a dead nuke Raph does it is not afraid to die just so that he could get some picks I'm not sure how much use we'll see out of dark seal then eventually medice As uh, currently only has one stack on it And you looking to force a little bit of a fight here common bird does manage to pop the shield bow on shadow star so that it is looking to be at least a small victory. Um, Rathbone does have both the red and blue buff. And we're actually going to see Hide It My Sock take a little bit of damage here. Super Mega Death Rocket's going to come out from Jinx as well as the Requiem from Karthus. But no kill is found. Yeah, it's that small bit of takiness coming out. Or not small, but takiness coming out of uh, Sacramento that you mentioned that even though NAU is able to dish out a lot of damage, they just have... Oh, too many tanky uh, champs on the side of Sacramento, so even, no matter how much you can burst them down, they still just might survive, especially if uh, especially if they're able to have such a good gold economy, good good gold economy, and buying those uh, items that they need uh, re, uh, for armor and magic resistance. I mean, obviously we have a uh, Hecarim right now actually going with obviously a uh, Turbo Chem Tank being able to be even faster now and uh, get that tankiness and while not doing quite as much damage you're going to see a nigh unkillable he a nigh unkillable hecarim right now with a uh, chem tank uh bye yeah i mean hecarim is in a really really fantastic spot right now he's looking to get the dead man second it looks like hasn't gone for any magic resist but it also doesn't look like any of you has really the magic damage they want uh, at least consistently that to put down on hecarim here I mean, Karma could do some decent damage, but I don't think it's enough to be able to burst down Hecarim, and that leaves just about only Karth, almost uh, only Karthus. I mean, Janna does some magic damage, but you're not going to see that coming into play that much. So Karthus is about the only magic damage uh, you're going to be seeing out of any use side, and I don't think it's enough to bring down Hecarim. I, I really don't think it is, especially right now. Yeah, Baron is already down to 3,000 HP. Wrathbone and the rest of NAU are looking for a steal here. 
secure will come out from Hecarim here as Wrathfilm is forced to go gold with the stopwatch. Killing Instincts is going to count as high as my stock goes. Legendary Hecarim going on a killing spree here. Kaisa finding the second kill as Tianxi is looking to try and find anything with the Yone Spirit. However, as the Unstoppable comes through, no more kills will be found for either side. Man, bad damage off of Hecarim. Uh, Wrath was almost brought down by, I want to say, 80% just from one charge. At this point, I have to agree. I mean, you know, it's just with no armor for the side of NEU, um, it's really just a harsh game overall. Architect is able to put out tons of damage still on the Hecarim on multiple facts in that he is ahead and he has the the, uh, the Hecarim passive, which he makes excellent use of through things like the chem tank and, and honestly anything he has. He has chem tank, he has ghost, and he has phase rush, all three. He's got tons of extra AD coming in at different intervals, some of which on demand. And at this point, NAU's going to find themselves in a really hard-pressed spot to try and make anything else happen this game. And uh, like you said, we see that dead man's now coming out of Hecarim right now. Um, now it's going to just going to be faster and tankier. That's It's all Hecarim wants, honestly. That's all you need. Uh, you do enough damage just with the base ability damage. And uh, like you said, uh, the uh, AD damage coming out and being able to, once again... Nuke just about anybody on uh, NEU's side. It's I'm not sure what NEU needs to do to win here. Um, they need to probably just find anyone who might be alone and just pick them off. But speaking of which, Killer Instinct burned is hiding my sock. Still is legendary a clean ten and zero. Tanshi really just had no chance there. Yeah. Flash comes out from the Karthus, looking to get some slowing down onto the Kaisa. She's going to use the Hyperdrive to try and walk away where she can. Wrathfoam taking a huge chunk of damage. NAU committing way too much to try and get this kill. Karthus ultimate is going to come down, trying to find some damage here. However, Cannon Barrage from the Gangplank, as well as the Corky, is going to put a ton of damage onto the Karma. Super Mega Death Rocket is going to come out from Net here. However, it won't find any connection. Woozy is going to use that Magnet Storm to try and catch Net out even further. But as the heal and tons of shielding come out for the side of NAU... We're going to see another dragon go down to the side of Sacramento. Hide at my sock and Rel here are playing super, super aggressive into the NAU base. NAU is just stuck trying to make anything happen on their own front. Long as Yone goes down once again, Jinx finding her, her next death at the hands of Kaisa at 12 0. Hecarim come charging in with the devastating charge, getting Comma Bird out from under tower. Salad being able to pick up that fourth kill there. Topside and Hib is going to go down. Is it going to be a possible tutorial style end from Sacramento here? Looks like it is as inhib number three goes down. Nexus turret number one is the next to fall, followed shortly by number two. And as we see the game freeze up, we do have to assume that it is going to be GG game number one of the series going over to Sacramento. Yeah, unfortunately there, even though Yone and Jinx got those really early kills, any wasn't able to keep up that momentum that they got off uh, right off the bat, honestly. I mean, if we look at uh, Yone there, the only kill they got was from that that initial uh, five-man uh, invade. So that is quite unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, it was it was rough all around. Um, I really do have to say that I think NAU fell victim to their own comp. They just had no front line available. And once a lead was given over to Sacramento, they were able to just abuse the absolute hell out of it um, by using, honestly, just the explosive team fight they had and getting just great levels of crowd control off as well as just being too tanky for any of you to do anything about. I, I see why you would pick, you know, Karma for top lane, but it's not going to help if Jinx isn't already carrying the entire team, you know, being that hyper carry that she is. So I understand why you get the double support so that uh, you can have your squishy uh, Jinx live as long as possible, but when you have so much dive and CC coming out of the Sacramento side, you're no matter what, you're going to have a tough time trying to live. And with that, we will be back with game two in just a few minutes here. Um, stick around and we'll be back with more action then.
Welcome back, everyone, for Game 2 of NAU versus CSU Sacramento in the Big Sky playoffs. Um, NAU will be taking blue side for Game 2 in the best of three series. And we're right into picks and bands. Band number one is going to be Udyr from the side of NAU. Very standard, very practical. Um, Udyr's just one of those annoying champions, even after nerfs. Um, seeing Evelyn come out from the side of Sacramento is no surprise here, as Rathcomb is... A huge Evelyn player and a huge Evelyn fan in general. I fully expect we'll be seeing some very similar bands come out um, that we saw last game with maybe one or two of them changed up on either side to prevent some of those picks from going through. Um, I'm interested to see what kind of OP champs will be let through uh, picks and bands here. Um, we did see Seraphine banned out and Hecarim is going to be next. Yeah, if, if any is going to have a similar comp to last time, which Honestly, I hope it's not quite as similar. I do want to see that frontline tankiness that NEU needs coming through. But regardless, if you're going to have a similar uh, draft uh, to last time, banning out the Hecarim is something they should have done in the first place. Um, we'll see if they'll ban out Rel too, or if they'll let that slide uh, through too, or maybe take it for themselves. They are blue side. Yeah, NEU does have the luxury of being first pick here. Um, we are going to see Tristana banned out. Tristana is very popular in both mid and bottom at the moment. Uh, just being able to play a super aggressive game state. Um, just mostly abusing things like Hill of Blades, and at least in the mid lane, uh, she has the opportunity to go Ignite, which means she can get solo kills as early as level 2. Fizz is going to be the final ban coming out in round 1 here. I like the pick coming out from any of you already. They do have the Seraphine open, and they're going to take it while it's open. And snatch it away from their opponents. I mean, Seraphine still is such, just such a high value champion. Uh, we are going to see Rel picked up again from the side of Sacramento. So I'm honestly not too familiar with the matchup, but we do have two really high priority supports. Um, and if Seraphine isn't careful with positioning and lane, Rel, I would say, has the possible upper hand here. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have a lot of range uh, from Seraphine because she has pretty decent amount of range. Might be able to keep Rel away for a bit, but how long can you do that for? Honestly, Rel is able to get in, uh, get in there so quickly, and it's hard to get her away. Uh, but Volley coming out on Guaysuma is probably a jungler or topside. Um, I'm really happy to see the Volley Bear pick come out. Um, it's not one I've had the pleasure of casting recently, um, but he was also one of the champions that got some jungle buffs. Um, so I fully expect we'll be seeing the free low bear in the jungle. Um, of course, he still has plenty of options, and at least in terms of going topside. But if this isn't a jungle bear, I will be thoroughly surprised, and I'm thoroughly excited to see what Architect is going to be able to do this game with that pick, especially as we see the Karthus locked in once again for Rathpom. The Karthus didn't quite work out that well last time. He's only able to find a few picks. Are we seeing Karma again? I think we are. Karma does get locked in, and immediately I am a little doubtful, uh, especially as Shadowstar in the mid lane locks in Orianna. I mean, I would say that NAU still has plenty of options, at least in terms of flexing. Um, Karma can go either top or support. Seraphine can go mid or support. Um, NAU is also just really AP heavy right now. Uh, obviously, they'll be picking a physical damage dealer in the form of, of their AD carry, but as Jinx got banned out, I'm interested to see what is left in the pool for net here, especially since we've seen stuff like Tristana get taken away, uh, which is honestly just most of the stuff I think we've seen play net play in the past. I'm not sure why mm, uh, Yone didn't. Yone can uh, be really good, but I'm not sure if Yone was quite the ban you want to make. I would have banned pro possibly a frontliner such as Galio, who could go mid and you know, uh, take that type of pick away from NAU, but it looks like Sacramento's not worried about that, and uh, Samir getting banned out. Samir's pretty strong. She got slightly nerfed, but she got a lot of buffs recently uh, to other things, um, but I'm going to assume it's some type of pick that, uh, comfort pick for someone on Sacramento's side, because it's a bit of a strange ban, but eh. On top, on kind of the realm of Samir ban, um, she's certainly not as high priority as she used to be uh, because she basically got gutted a, about two patches ago. Um, her E can no longer dash to allies, and she got a lot of damage values nerfed out. Um, she did receive, I believe, a slight buff to her Q, which 
the I believe it's just a slight AD ratio buff later on. But she still is a very dynamic AD carry, especially when she has somebody to follow up on, like Darrell or Volleybear. Um, even when Oriana has been picked here, it's it's all it's all about kind of that team fight synergy. We do have final picks coming in. Uh, Net and Piccolo are going to be locking uh, Sivir and Darius for the side of NAU. Um, I'm really excited to see these picks come out. Sivir has had some popularity recently with a poke build. Um, some people have been equating it to the equi or at least a similar. Uh, style that poke Varus was when that was popular i believe last sometime last season hovering between Aphelios and misfortune here but looks like Aphelios is coming out uh Aphelios, uh being pretty strong so i'm pretty i'm pretty sure it and uh you're going to have rel protecting you too and if he's able to drop down any of his uh turrets while rel is coming right on top of you you're taking a lot of damage there is not a lot you can do about that once it hits. Um, and it looks like we're taking that karma. Yeah, actually, yeah, of course. We're taking that karma to support. Um, and I honestly, that's probably better off. I'm I'm going to be happy with that, that Darius. Uh, I don't think he's quite the tankiest that I would like to see, but he's still going to be able to be a frontliner at least. Uh, so we'll see how uh, Darius will do. Um, Darius versus Malphite, though, I'm not sure how uh, good that matchup is. Uh, Malphite has to be a little bit careful about approaching. The uh, thing is, Malphite might be coming better out in that uh, team fight just due to his ultimate. It's so strong being able to knock multiple people out in the air or honestly just to escape out of awful situations. Uh, either way, it's a fantastic ultimate, so we'll see how that will come into play. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, um, I think we have some kind of interesting matchups going on. Um, mostly in terms of when it comes to top lane, I think Malphite is going to win out on early game trades, since I assume he'll be taking Comet with Scorch and uh, Q-Maxing with Corrupting Potion. So Darius does have to be careful of that and will probably opt for something like the Magic Resist Runes in lane and maybe a Doran Shield to help with that. Um, outside of that, I think the comp of NAU is definitely a step in the right direction. Um, Darius is not going to be the tankiest there is. Uh, he, he relies a lot on his decimate healing, as well as just kind of getting something like Stride Breaker and building more along the, more along the lines of a tank and less so on kind of those, um... I would say bruiser hybrid items. He can go those if he's carrying, but honestly, for, if I were NAU here, I would still have Darius build like two damage items and then build full tank afterward. Uh, probably something like the Stridebreaker Mythic with Steric Gauge, second, maybe even Black Cleaver if he wanted to opt into that. But outside of that, I would definitely say he has to prioritize more tank stats here. Um, overall, I think the draft goes to sacramento again um i really like the frontline heavy comps they draft here um you know you have great engage basically from all sides uh even aphelios has kind of conditional engage here if, if he yeah. has uh the gravitum yeah. with his moonlight vigil let's say yeah depending on the type of weapon he has he, he can get that engage uh oriana being fairly solid uh going not not like Excellent, I would say, but Oriana's just a solid character right now. So, Seraphine, obviously, uh, one of the best champs, but not. I don't think she's quite that good in mid lane, but in team fights, she'll be definitely seeing much more uh, use. Yeah, I mean, Seraphine definitely is more of a commitment to the team fight. Um, in the same vein, Oriana is just as much as well. Both have team fight altering and team fight starting or ending, just overall massive impact throughout the game when it comes to those crucial moments. Um, we are going to see Seraphine go Moonstone. Um, I'd be thoroughly surprised again if she didn't. It's Even after nerfs to both the champion and the item, the interaction is still just too broken uh, to have anything else really happen. Outside of which, um, I'm interested in hoping to see the NAU plays a much safer bottom lane. Sivir is definitely going to want to farm for items here and just kind of serve her role as both a utility and a poke champion uh, with the build she'll, she'll most likely be going. 
She could, of course, opt for a more traditional build with something like the Noon Quiver items. But as we see here in loading screen, as soon as that comes up, um, we, Sivir does have stuff like Lethal Tempo here, so she actually may not be going for that poke build that we were talking about. Yeah, and uh, uh, Tian Shi going for Airy. Like I said, it's going to be helpful in team fights, but in that laning phase, we're not going to see that much use out of it other than the small world damage it's able to provide uh, in those early pokes. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things that you kind of have along for the value it provides. Um, Aerie is still a very versatile rune, and we're actually looking to see the five men on the bottom side of the map this time coming out from both teams. Four members of Sacramento are going to be in the mid side river bush with NAU taking a slightly more defensive stance. Uh, well, actually not necessarily defensive here. Um, they haven't even left any wards behind. Uh, we do see all five members of Sacramento venturing into the NAU red side, which is a bit of a dangerous proposition. And I think both teams are kind of onto the fact that invades went out from either side and <laughs> n nothing really happened because of it. Wards do get dropped in respective jungles. And we're looking to get some backs in, especially for those solo laners who have to walk all the way back to top lane. Oh, man, I was hoping to see a five, a full level one team fight. It would have been uh, funny to see, but obviously it's not going to come out right now. So you're, uh, at least both sides will have information on the jungler in the beginning, but honestly, it's not that much of a surprise at this point. Yeah, and I'm actually surprised junglers didn't back for scanners here. Uh, they may not have had the time to do so. But typically, you will see junglers drop their ward and back for a scanner in the early portions of the game uh, because scanner will be up as soon as your camps are. And interestingly enough, we're also going to see Wrath Poem starting on red side instead of on the blue, which uh, helps Karthus a little bit more because Karthus likes to be, you know, very spammy in the jungle with his lay waste. Oh, man. Yeah. Honestly, you don't need the poke build for Sivir. Sivir does enough damage as is with that, uh, with the uh, Q of hers. Yeah, I mean, Sivir does have plenty of uh, harass with the Boomerang Blade, especially in lane. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen it in-game, but when Sivir does have the poke build up and she hits you with a double Q, it chunks you out pretty hard if you're not playing something like a tank. And even then, if she has something like Desserild as a grudge or Lord Dominic uh, regards, then she's got absolute crazy damage um, if you don't just kind of get, in, get right up in her face. Well, honestly, not only have I seen it, I've experienced it. I I usually either play, like, uh, Bard or some type of squishy, slightly squishy uh, support in bot lane, and Sivir is one of the most annoying things I've ever faced because even if it's just a small little Q coming at me, it does so much to me, and it's always, I'm always in pain from it. But, once again, we're not going to see it right now, so it's not too bad. Uh... However, I think it might have been really beneficial for keeping Rao out of there. Attempted crash down coming out from Woozy, but a very nicely timed spell shield. Net and Piccolo able to put out some harass onto the Rel, making honestly just great use of their champion abilities and putting themselves in good positions to take favorable trades. Yeah, um, that's the thing I don't think we quite mentioned about Sivir is that she has a spell shield that will refund itself when used properly. So that's honestly something that uh, is going to come in real use and you're going to see no mana loss from it. Uh, unlike if you had a Morgana as your support uh, putting spell shield onto you. Uh, so we're going, to, we're going to see how much use you can get out of that. However, it's only for one uh, spell shield. Uh, Sivir's only works for one thing. So when Rao is able to get that dive into a stun, uh, you're still going to get stunned, unfortunately. So let's see how much that will honestly help. Bit of a trade coming down on the top lane is Sal's put under duress and forced to flash. Common Bird is going to follow up just as fast with the ghost being popped and the first blood comes out for Wrath Poem. Yeah, and uh, we can already see that Wrath Poem is... Uh, doing better than the last time uh able to get that first blood and uh is able to uh provide a lot of uh going to be able to get to that uh state he want uh, karthus always wants to be in uh which is ahead and uh you know in in safety even if you want to be that uh you won't play that kamikaze style 
Yeah, I mean, it definitely puts them in a much more comfortable situation, especially compared to last game. Um, both junglers did pick up one scuttle, although I believe through an invade, Rathco may have developed a slight camp advantage. The other thing this does is if we look at gold values and we see just kind of what happened overall, Combo Bird did pick up the assister, which I believe is 200 gold for first blood on top of having a 12 CS uh, differential, meaning he's actually up about 400-ish gold on his opponent. Yeah, and Rel purposely getting out of the, uh, the uh, mounted state there because, uh, well, when you go into the horse, you have a b few seconds of being able to get a flip back. And that flip back is honestly, in my opinion, a lot stronger than the uh, dive because it puts you right behind the uh, it puts you right behind Rel, and she's able to stun you that much easier. So uh, we'll see if that uh, comes into play uh, as she hides in the bushes. Another really rough trade coming out in the top lane for both laners. In all honesty, Common Bird taking a bunch of damage from those lane minions. Uh, Malphite just getting the five stack Darius bleed and taking a ton of damage back. We are going to see a bit of priority going back over to the side of Sacramento here in the bottom lane as Ophelios has picked up the flamethrower. And honestly, my concern here is that Net is letting ACS, or ACS differential grow, um, and it's already at, at about 20, um, which is worth slightly more than a kill. We are also going to see Dragon number one go down with Volibear. Makes total sense here as Volibear does get more healing back from his chomps onto minions and monsters. I believe it's just monsters, excuse me. Yeah, and uh, we see actually a, a ward in that mid bush because that's honestly uh, Rel's perfect state if Potential you're Potential dive being set up here. Crashdown is going to go through. Magnus Storm is not to be at however. The command shockwave is there as the tower aggro is juggled very nicely. We're going to see a double kill go out for Architect and a, I believe a missed charm for the Seraphine. Any of you not able to find a single kill out of that dive? Yeah, um, it did get the flash out of Orianna at least, but you honestly at least want one kill out of that uh, dive. But unfortunately, you're not going to be able. There, uh, any is not able to secure something like that at this time. Um, that dive, um, uh, it, it's it rel things. You know, you're able to get that easy engage, and I'm not sure if even the spell shield. The spell shield probably came up from Sivir, but what does it matter if you get stunned right afterwards? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a rough situation there. Um, Net was only able to spell shoot one thing and actually did that with flash up. Not sure how much it actually could have done there. But, you know, hey, if, you know, he had used it and he had died, it wouldn't have made much of a difference except a added five-minute cooldown. So, honestly, I don't think holding the flash is the worst thing to have happened here. NAU does really need to be careful for plays like that, though, as they have no, actually, correction, they only have one teleport, and it was used in that play, but nothing else was found out of it. So Tianchi actually found themselves put further behind because Oriana picked up two assists compared to their none. Yeah, and uh, we can see that Wrath, uh, oh, crash down coming out on the net here. Net is going to get stunned up by the Aphelios, and the Moonlight Vigil gets popped. Net left very low under tower. However, the Ignite ticking from Piccolo is hide in my sock is forced to flash, and no heal is available. Rathcomb does have the does not have the Requiem available quite yet. However, this crop control coming out from Rel is going to be enough to peel off the pressure from Aphelios. A very good getaway coming out from Sacramento, despite a lot of heavy damage coming in from NAU. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, we did see Ignite get dropped there. So, uh, you're honestly, uh, honestly, you're not going to see uh, the. Uh, honestly, I'm not sure why they dropped Ignite because they weren't quite under tower range, and so it would be hard to try to secure a kill like that. Even if Wrath is able to deal, dish out a lot of damage, you're. He doesn't have boots. He can't quite chase them right now. Even and uh, we already saw the wall come down, so that. They can even uh, re-engage in uh, the fight. I mean, at this point, I would argue that the ignite was just used for any sort of damage uh, to try and get get people down to the to the low enough threshold to be able to secure a kill. Um, ignite is only a three minute cooldown, and as we see, you know, just kind of talking about it here, Piccolo's ignite is already about a third of the way through, actually coming up on half um, half of its cooldown timer. Interestingly enough, we actually do have a small gold lead for NAU. I believe it rests largely in the top side, as plates have yet to go down really for either lane at the 9th minute 30 second mark, which is honestly just as surprising. We are going to see blue buff handed over to Shadowstar here in the mid lane. 
which is going to provide him a bit of a heavier lane presence than Tianxi is able to able to do on their own. Yeah, um, yeah, that gold dif uh, the CS uh, difference between uh, Common Bird and uh, Sal there is quite heavy. Honestly, we're seeing just about like a forty CS difference, but uh, honestly, just as bad is the gold difference between Sivir and Aphelios, uh, seeing just about a 30 CS difference uh, right there, and that is almost just as bad as Aphel Aphelios getting uh, all that money and being able to become that much more dangerous. Uh, right now, even in mid lane, while not as bad, we could see uh, just about a 10 CS difference uh, between the two. Not obviously, as bad, but you still don't want to be down like that, especially against uh, an Orianna uh, who will uh, be able to provide or be able to poke you out, honestly, if you're surfing. Yeah, I mean, I really like the positioning that Tianxi has had in lane so far. Um, when trades have to be had with Orianna, I generally feel like they're not too terrible. Um, Sacramento is placing an immense amount of priority here on the bot lane. This is the third or fourth time i believe they've looked to put four people down in that lane teleport is also available from the mouth from the malphite with dragon number two another mountain dragon uh being put up um i don't know how any is really going to be able to do anything with this current map state yeah there's not a lot they could do right now and I'm, well, I think Ghost is still good. Root coming I, down onto the Aphelios here. Hide My Sock is going to be able to put down the Moonlight Vigil damage. However, the Magnet Storm is still ticking. Net is ignited and is forced to run under tower. However, the Sivir move speed has been, has been used up. However, the dive is coming through from Volley Bear. Volley Bear getting the Flash W on, onto the Sivir, going on a killing spree. Tower has come back online, and Piccolo might be able to find a kill here. Shut down going over to the NAU support. Teleport does get burned here from the you mid lane however nothing else will be found out of the play because sacramento has backed off well far away yeah i was mentioning earlier that uh well i think ghost is still good on darius i would honestly like to see teleport because i think calling a bird is essential for all these uh is essential for survival or even finding picks from all these uh dives that sacramento's doing so i'm not sure if speaking uh, of ghost does get popped Common Bird looking to try and find those fifth stacks to get the tree damage off. Flash does get used after the unstoppable force from the Malphite, but Common Bird nonetheless finds himself a solo kill in the top lane. Yeah, and well, you know what? Ghost will be much more useful when we get into later team fights. But... Grasp on the next P under duress here from Architect. However, it's now a 1v3 situation as the Sacramento bot lane is trying to make something happen. Heal does come out, and Architect is barely walking out as a crashdown comes down on the net. Net's going to be st stunned up and put under a ton of. Crowd control is hiding in my sock, takes their first kill, and the play gets turned around for the second time. Tianxi going to be the next to possibly caught out. Command Shockwave did go through, however, the flash was burned. Yeah, but honestly, if you're surviving and making sure that Oriana doesn't get that uh, advantage on you, more advantage on you, uh, honestly, flash, worth it. But it's unfortunate that you're going to be down that summoner spell right now. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think that for Darius, I, or for Common Bird, Honestly, I would like to see that teleport just so that he can get involved with all the all the problems that he was having all around the map. It's great that he's able to walk down that Malphite, but honestly, he needs to be there to protect his teammates. It is a really harsh sacrifice of map presence here. Um, I think any of you may not have actually taken that completely into account when the pick was was put through. Um, you know, Darius with Ghost can be a very terrifying presence in lane because honestly, you never know when he's gonna hit the Nosk and just run you down like a degenerate. Um, but as we do see first turret go down a couple seconds before plating falls, we're actually gonna see a huge set of value going over to the side of Sacramento here. Oriana was also forced to burn flash in the mid lane as Common Bird has completed the stride breaker with Merc Treads and is a pretty terrifying force, at least for anybody without a good chunk of armor. Yeah, and uh, we can also see that as Sacramento securing Rift Herald there. Um, so they already got a full turret before turret flame was able to go down. So that Rift Herald is just going to provide that much more value and that much more pressure onto NAU once they're able to drop that probably down mid, I'm going to assume. 
Um, there looks like they have a lot of uh, Sacramento in uh, mid right now, so they're probably looking to drop it there and give Tianchi a uh, huge problem. Yeah, we're also seeing a ton of pressure up in the mid lane. Uh, Rift Herald is in the pockets of the Volley Bear here for Sacramento. However, as we do see a four-man mid lane presence come up, we're also going to see a bit more presence in the top lane coming from Common Bird. He's getting a really good trade down here on Nassau, but we do see the Rift Herald dropped, and it's going to be tower number two falling for NAU here, maybe even a third if Shelly gets that second charge off into the tier two. Yeah, but it looks like Shelly's not going to be able to uh, get that second charge off. Uh, and you playing a pretty decent defense, but uh, it looks like we're going to have a giant uh, gank on top side probably. Rel is setting up for the gank here on the top side. Volleybear is going to be the next to be caught out, however, as Common Bird was forced to flash up in that top side of the map. Tianchi is trying to put out some damage here as Rathbone finds a second kill on the architect. Common Bird getting the ring gauge off of the two-man charm comes out from Seraphim Crashdown is going to go through onto the only remaining member of NAU's front line. Common Bird is going to follow to the Aphelios here as the, as the Infernum Ultimate comes through. Requiem goes out, however, finding a kill for Malphite, or kill onto Malphite, as Aphelios finds himself kill number two of the fight. Hide it in my sock is trying to put down a ton of damage on a Wrath here, going on a Rampage as Karthus passive is up, and the ticking damage comes out, as well as a very well-placed Q. Karthus is able to find himself a, another kill and a three-stack Dark Seal at the end of the fight, with Woozy forced to back under tower. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're going to try and uh, get that uh, last kill. Well, a decent effort out of NAU, uh, Sacramento came out on top of having a two for three there. Uh, oh, Good bit of damage coming down with a very well-placed boomerang blade from Net. However, Oriana did use the teleport here and has the move speed available. Shadowstar not quite in any real situation to be making any plays with that health as net puts down some decent damage architect still playing a very aggressive game despite not having really the bodies as a shutdown comes through a very well placed boomerang blade once again coming through from net yeah and uh that that kill is really essential because ariana just burned her teleport so uh in this upcoming dragon in about 30 seconds she's not going to be able to teleport in and uh, try and help with the team fight. She's going to have to walk all the way over there after death and might not be able to be participate in this uh, dragon. Yeah, it's going to be a really rough time here. Dragon is going to be up as soon as Oriana is, and given that she has the home guard available from dying here, um, I have no doubt that she'll be able to make it to the fight, but any really is just going to have a tough time getting anything else done here. I still think they lose more a little bit harder than they'd like to 5v5. Dragon does get started up here, down to about 4,000 health as the Wall of Pain comes up from Karthus trying to do a little bit of zoning. Architect does have the Flash Smite available. However, given that we do see the Volley Bear Lightning come down and Woozy get a nice Magnet Storm set up for the Unstoppable Force as well as the Shockwave. Common Bird is trying to get some damage down into the back line here. However, the Nox... The, Darius Dunk won't come out for anybody as a double kill is going over to Oriana here. Tianxi is now stuck in the Dragon Pit, trying to find any sort of damage. It's a four for none for the so favoring Sacramento here. Net is forced to Gale Force away from hiding in my sock. However, the red buff slow is going to be too much here, and we're probably going to look at an ace. However, a very good flash and blast cone use coming out from the Sivir here. Hiding in my sock, still looking to play very aggressive, dropping a turret over the inhibitor tower wall. Any of you finding themselves a terrible fight at the hands of Sacramento. Yeah, um, I think the I think the charm might just come out too early right then because uh, it, while it did provide some support, I don't think it was enough to completely help uh, all of any of you out. It was a, it got a lot of Sacramento, but it just didn't come into fruition. Obviously, uh, with uh, the near ace uh, from Sacramento. Um, Darius, once again, like uh, you mentioned, it's not the tankiest and is relying on the healing that he can get from his abilities, but it's not enough to be able to survive four people going in on you at once. Yeah, I mean, that's really where kind of the fault of the champion shines. As much as he's able to heal up big chunks through hitting four-man cues, um, as long as you focus him down as soon as he gets into your back line, he really can't do much else. We are seeing pings come down for the side of Sacramento here as Wrathfoam is going to get caught out. Has the flash available, however, Malphite's there to pick up the kill, and no blast cone will be had for the NAU jungler. Yeah, I don't think that uh, all it's going to be able to do. Yeah, no. Unfortunate. Charm coming out from Seraphine, looking for her possible solo kills as Shibo gets popped for hiding my sock. 
Moonlight Vigil is not available. However, the life steal is there. Yeah, now Seraphine's uh, down her ult too, and if the if we see a team fight coming up soon, uh, it's going probably not going in NAU's favor again. Now that you're down your ultimate, that is so so good. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of resources being used for the side of NAU here. Um, luckily, we do have Kama Bird down in the bottom lane, able to secure a turret for his team. However, just as just as much, we also have another turret falling for the, in the top side in, fa in favor of Sacramento. And Baron's actually on the table here. Given that Phileas is actually two items, I think that 20-minute Baron is entirely possible, especially as the pings start coming through. Yeah, and... Uh... Sacramento already have the ward set up in uh, Booside uh, Jungle, so they're going to be able to just, I think, secure it just that fast, honestly. Yeah, I mean, Baron's already down to about 7,000 HP. NAU is actually well aware of the fact that Baron is going through. Malphite does have teleport available for the fight. Net does pop the ultimate and goes on the hunt. However, a ton of crowd control coming through with a nice jump from Volley Bear. Lands a double kill to start off the fight. Rathbone already brought very low here as Woozy's going to be dying to calm a bird. Tribreaker does go through. However, Felius is going to be able to find the kill. And Volley gets a triple looking for that Quadra onto Tan Chi. Flash comes over for both as Volley Bear finds himself that fourth kill. And Sacramento can honestly do whatever they want here. Uh, I think they're going to go secure that Baron. Because why not? You're... No one's there to stop you anymore. Yeah, I mean, Baron is up on the table and the Felios is still present. Uh, Baron should be an easy take here. We do have some of the respawn timers for NAU coming in. Don't think they have any teleports available or anything of the like to try and contest here. At this point, all they can do is try and get Shadowstar on the Oriana out of the mid lane and try and hold on to as much of their base as they can. Yeah, no, but that double, C that CC and the uh, ultimates coming out, Taking out both uh, Net and Piccolo, two essential parts of NAU's uh, team right now, being the damage and, uh, you know, the one trying to keep you alive, the support. It, it was honestly just... It's, it's, the, it's the strength of uh, Sacramento's draft, of having such a fantastic engage coming out of Malphite and Rel. You're... I don't know what you do about that, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it's... I honestly I can't say that there is much to be done about um, silver can only spell shield one thing and with so much crowd control related ultimates for the side of Sacramento here it's really just tough because as long as they don't all burn them at the exact same time and they layer them even relatively well they get such massive value out of just existing and it's it's really just such a difficult situation to make anything good come out of especially if you're on the on the losing side here like NEU is uh, with, I believe, a six thousand, roughly 6,000 gold deficit. Yeah, I, I think I said earlier it was uh, Malphite and Rel. It was actually Volley uh, taking out uh, both of them, I believe, not Malphite. Regardless, though, it's still so, so impressive, whether it be from Volley or Malphite. Uh, Volley, too. You have three really, really good Engage uh, champions here that completely wipes out most of the squishies on uh, NEU's side. Um, and Oriana and Aphelios, well, Aphelios only sometimes, being able to get those great engages too. Honestly, Sacramento has such a strong, like, presence at for the start of a fight that makes the rest of the fight impossible for NAU. Yeah, I mean, it's just, at this point, I just don't see what really gets done here unless there's a terrible misstep from something like the Aphelios or the Oriana here. NEU really just doesn't have much of a chance in fights. Um, they can possibly look to make a pick down here in the bottom lane, but as the Volley Bear ult comes down, Piccolo's going to get stunned up by the Volley Bear Q. Tower will get back online, but not just not before falling to the side of Sacramento here with those Baron minions in tow. Yeah, it... Flash Crashdown does come through as a nice unstoppable force and a multi-man charm comes out. However, it's just not going to be enough as we see two members of NAU fall immediately. Rathpoem will be dying to the Ignite here. Requiem will go out, probably finding a kill on the Malphite, which is a little unlucky for the side of Sacramento, but I don't think they really care all that much. They might look to end the game here. Yeah, Baron, you have three people down on NAU. This could just be GG right here. Yeah, I mean, with no respawn timers available, Combo Bird is... 
might look to try and do what he can here. But given the teleport coming out from Oriana, even though a multi-man hook comes out and the stride breaker is used to try and get away, Common Bird is going to find himself another death at the hands of Shadowstar, who goes on a rampage as Nexus Turret 1 and 2 are falling. So too shall the Nexus, and we're going to see a 2-0 series go in favor of Sacramento, letting them move on to the next step in playoffs. Man, yeah, honestly, I wish any of you had the type of draft they had last uh, last week, but obviously that's not coming through. There's just too much CC and Engage on the side of Sacramento side. Truly getting the, uh, honestly, the much better team comp. Yeah, I mean, it, at this point, I honestly think it, it was just kind of, it rested a lot in terms of the Engage that was going through. Um, you know, when all five members of your team have the opportunity to engage at some point or another, obviously with picks like the Aphelios, it doesn't come through at perfect timing all the time. But when you still have, you know, four out of five, that's still an 80%, which means you're doing a ton more engaging and you have so many more windows, especially when you have such easy engages like Rel and Malphite. I mean, Volibear is a little bit more telegraphed when it comes to that kind of stuff, but even then it still has such a huge impact, especially when you set up dives because, it's, you know, Volibear just turns off towers for a few seconds. It gives you just absolutely whatever you need to do uh, to make fights happen. And as long as you don't get caught up after tower after things like towers come back online, the comp can be executed, I think, very easily. Yeah, I honestly, and you had a pretty poke heavy uh, comp, but it's it, it's just not going to come through if the whole in, in the team fights because you can't just poke out a team fight honestly it, it helps a bit but you're not going to be able to survive once the whole team is there and they're all getting into you there is just no easy way to survive that honestly yeah i mean you know it's just a rough situation all around um I believe there is another game next week, uh, probably same place, same time. So if you enjoyed today's games and want to see more, um, tune in then and we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.